It's good, and uh, we're gonna be playing two songs for you today. Uh, the first one is called The Pretender by Bill Biden, and the next one is Red Bird by Red Hot Chili Peppers. Hello and welcome to Youth Foundation 3081 Celebration. 
Thank you to the McLeod College Band for your welcoming performance. My name is Monique and these are my classmates, Stacey and Tiff. We are studying VCAL at McLeod College and will be your MCs for the day. Before we get started today, I would like to introduce Mark Rose, the Director of Indigenous Education. Mark Rose. Thank you very much for that uh, welcome. Thank you. I understand there are a number of uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students here today. Could you put up your hands, please, if you're not here yet? I was going to model um, the youth, and I was going to ask them to come up and do this acknowledgement with me. So um, in their absence, I will, uh, as someone who's not a traditional owner, I, um, I'm a Gundi Jamara man from Western Victoria. And uh, um, uh, we, uh, we have at this university a really strong commitment to uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander protocols. And uh, at significant events, we always do either a knowledge of the country or a welcome to country. So um, will you join me from the homelands where you come from, wherever they are, uh, in acknowledging the homelands where we gather on today? the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations. Now, Wurundjeri people have, for many, many thousands of years, gathered in settings not dissimilar to this, and where they have shared knowledge with respect and with pride. And um, in sharing that knowledge, everyone goes away that much richer. And let's, won't you join me in uh, stepping into that, that mindset, that frame, and uh, we acknowledge the uh, elders, past and present, of the Wurundjeri and all the Kulin Nations, pay respects to ancestors um, and their spirits who still inform everything that happens. Please enjoy this gathering, share your knowledge uh, with respect, and uh, most of all, enjoy the day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rose, for the welcome. Today we are here to celebrate the achievements of young people who have conducted community projects funded through Youth Foundations 3081. The process of applying for funding has allowed us all to think about what matters to us in, a, in our community and what con contribution we as young people can make to the community. We are sure you'll be impressed by the broad range of projects that have been conducted in the last few months. We would like to thank La Trobe University for hosting the celebrations today. Many of us went on a tour of the university this morning. For the most of us, it was the first time we've ever been to a university. The tour was exciting and daunting at the same time. We are looking forward to having lunch in the Agoria area after the celebration to get more of a university feel. I would like to introduce Deputy Vice-Chancellor of La Trobe University, Professor Jane Long, to say a few words. Thanks very much indeed. Can I just start off by saying um, I really enjoyed that music. As a, a past Violent Femmes and Patti Smith fan, I, I love music like that. It wakes us up. Um, and thank you to Stacey, Tiffany and Monique for your introduction. I would also like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people as the traditional custodians of the land on which our Melbourne campus is located and to pay my respects to Elders past and present. On behalf of our Vice-Chancellor, John Dewar and the entire La Trobe University community, I would say welcome to the Youth Foundation 3081 celebration event. And I would take this opportunity as well to acknowledge the presence here today of Anthony Carbines, MP, State Member for Ivanhoe, Councillor Craig Landon, um, Mayor, Banyul City Council, uh, Nan Capel, Deputy Director at Bendigo Bank for Ivanhoe East and Heidelberg, uh, Michael Geary, Acting CEO, Banyul Community Health, and Mr. Simon McMillan, uh, CEO of Banyul City Council, and also my colleagues, um, Julie Jackson, Pro Vice Chancellor, Educational Partnerships, and Sue Davies, who has been instrumental yet again in um, liaising for La Trobe in relation to this event. I do want to begin by thanking everyone here, audience members and presenters alike, for being part of this event, um, the 3081 Youth Foundation celebration held here at the Bandura campus, and La Trobe is incredibly proud and pleased to be part of this event. I especially recognise the effort and enthusiasm of the young people from our surrounding neighbourhoods, 
doesn't it make you sound old talking about the young people? Anyway, um, from our surrounding neighbourhoods who've worked so hard to develop projects for the benefit of the community and to the Youth Foundation facilitator Katie Richards, who um, I am told has worked tirelessly to bring today's program together. So thank you very much indeed, Katie. Indeed. <laughs> I think something really special about this program is the willingness of people and organisations to be involved, to open doors and to make time and resources available um, to give young people an opportunity to have their voices heard. The network of support and people willing to champion the efforts of these emerging community leaders is commended, so I'd like to extend my thanks as well to the teachers and local agencies, including our own Latrobe staff, who've helped to make today possible. As I mentioned um, earlier, this celebration event has been held at La Trobe previously. Now it is the third celebration event that has been held at La Trobe. And I understand that much has happened since we last hosted you in September last year. A further celebration event was held at the Pavilion School in May and many ideas for community engagement have been developed and implemented by young people represented here today. For example, the Support and Assist Asylum Seekers Project has set up and established its own Facebook page. And the second Aboriginal debutante ball was held last week. La Trobe University is not only proud to be an official partner of um, the Youth Foundation 308, 3081, but we are committed to supporting the aspirations of the young people who are involved. Late last year, our staff held a trivia night, which raised over $5,000 for the foundation. And this year, we've launched a service learning in the community subject, where our students will undertake a placement at Banyul Community Health. Indeed, La Trobe has a long history in playing a key role in the development of leaders right across Melbourne's north. Brendan Murray, Executive Principal of Parkville College, and Josie Howie, Director of the Pavilion School, amongst others, are former La Trobe University students. Youth Foundation 3081, I think, is a terrific example of how this community works together and how this university fulfils its mission to serve local communities. In particular, we have a really important role to play as the University of the North. As we'll see today, that role is best done in partnership as we continue to do with our partners supporting the Foundation with the Bendigo Bank, Banyul Community Health and Banyul City Council. We're very proud to partner with the Foundation and our leaders of the future. Could I ask you to put your hands together now to wish the presenters well today. I, for one, am looking forward very much to hearing about these projects, and I certainly hope you enjoy and celebrate with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Long. I would like to invite you to present certificates to my classmates in VCAL at McLeod College, who will now come to the stage. Hi, my name is Shannon and this is my classmate Caitlin. Um, at the start of the year, our VCAL class completed a first aid and water safety course. From then on, we realised how important safety around water is, especially for younger people, so that's why we chose this project. We had to present our idea to Pavilion School and fill out a grant application form that included the costings of the lessons per student. Um, some problems we faced um, were uh, was keeping the communication channels open between all groups. 
um, the outcome. As you can see from the photos, the primary students are really enjoying their swimming lessons and, are and we are proud of our achievements and making positive impact on others. <laughs> Hi, I'm Madison and this is Louise and um, we organised the Islamic Museum excursion. Our aim is to make the McLeod College mus uh, Muslim kids proud of their heritage and make all Year 8 students of McLeod College more educated about the contributions of the Islamic world to our lives, like medicine, art and food. Our aim was to reduce racism and negative stereotypes. Um, we targeted the Year 8 students as they were studying Middle Ages and Humanities. Um, we, wanted to, we wanted the students to learn that while Europe was going through the Dark Ages, the Islamic world was in its Golden Age. Did you know that we can thank Islamic world for mathematics, architecture, medicine, the clock, universities, and navigation, even chess? Um, we applied for the grant to cover the following costs. Um, the bus to and from the museum, entry fees, and um, we organised the following activities during the excursion. A lecture, a guided tour, and the students also participated in a mosaic art workshop. That's it. <laughs> I'm um, sporting hoop dreams. This is I'm Sen, and this is Pop. Hoop dream is a basketball team, and oh, sorry. Hoop, hoop dream is a basketball team. It was organized by 14 from 301 to participate in. This is a very important project for teens, and it's really helped them stay out of trouble and keep them fit. Why we decided this project? There's a lot of kids in 301 areas who enjoy playing basketball. We play every Friday night at Olympic Village basketball courts from five to seven. This is an awesome project. It gives the 301 youth something fun to do and stay out of trouble. The 301 scan, the 301 scan was due to purchase basketball for a kid Bow pump, hoop team, team jacket. What we learned, we learned that in order to, to support our community, we have to provide young people with a voice, the opportunity to participate in making improvement. My bright idea, one day I had this bright idea, and I shared it with Katie Richard, the Youth Foundation 3081 coordinator. My idea was to fix that basketball court and the public toilet at Malang Park. I had an idea on how to improve the toilet so the park users feel safe when they need to use them. Malang Park is a popular park, but the state of the basketball court and the public is a problem. Meeting with the May on the 8th of August, I meet with the May of Banu, Mr. Craig Landon. We discuss my idea on how to improve Malang Park. Recommendation for Malang Basketball Court: Repair ba the basketball court surface because at the moment it gets flooding when there is a lot of rain. Improve the drainage of the basketball court so the drain does not collect in puddles. Fix net and backboard on basketball ring. And recommendation for the Mahang toilet to, to the toilet using New Zealand example as our inspir inspiration. Improve health and safety of the toilet block and make it safe for all the users of Malang Park. This is New Zealand example. That's what happened before. In the community project, they help each other improve their toilets. 
And that's the end of what it looked like. Tiffany, Stacey and I decided we wanted to do something for the girls in Parkville Youth, Youth Justice Precinct. On the 30th of May, after many weeks of organisation, we visited Parkville for a day trip to meet the girls and see if there was anything they wanted. A big part of our day was talking to the young mums that were in Parkville. We felt for the mothers and children and decided we wanted to do something to help them. We decided to assist in the mothers bonding with their children when they would visit. We used the 3081 grant money to buy toys and books for the children to use when they visit their mothers. We hope our toys assist with bonding between parents and children. We visited, we visited Parkville and presented the principal with the boxes of toys. We were really proud of our achievements and pleased that we made a positive impact on others. We sorted our toys into three boxes, one to three years old, three to five, and a craft box. We appreciate all the recognisation we have received from Parkville and the, all the local community who read the McLeod College newsletter and Dunbegan magazine. Hi, I'm Arben, this is Kane and Jaden. McLeod College is running a self-defence class at lunchtimes every Friday from 1.10 until 1.55 for years 11 to 12. Applying for the grant. We had a meeting with Kylie, the school nurse, and spoke about what days we were able to get the instructor in, which was Tony. He has about 30 years of experience on his belt. Once we confirm the start and finish dates, we're able to complete the rest of our grant application, including all the costings required and equipment. Obstacles we faced, finding the numbers. Um, we also had trouble finding someone that would come out to the school to run the self-defense classes for a reasonable price. <laughs> uh, uh, we chose self-defense classes to help senior students learn new tactics within the self-defense. We chose this to help increase the fitness of the kids at McLeod College as well as relieve stress about feeling unsafe on Melbourne streets. Um, what we learned, we learned to be organised. We also learned that we need to talk to more than just one person about getting things done. Hey, how's it going guys? My name's Marco. It's my team, Caleb and James, and our team, we decided to build a pergola at the school. Uh, I'm studying cabinet making at TAFE, and they're both studying uh, building and construction. And because we're both studying uh, in the woodwork, uh, woodworking field, uh, we decided it would be a good idea to use our skills and knowledge to help benefit the school community. Applying for the grant was 381 grant. The hardest thing about applying for the grant was writing the grant and working out the costing of materials and staying committed to finish it. The location of the pergola, we decided to go behind the VCAR room where it would be used next to the tables and seats. It, it's a good position because it gets a lot of sun. Uh, the progress that we have, we're still in the progress of finishing the pergola. Um, as you can see, there's pictures. We've put the posts up and started the roof. Uh, what's next? Um, putting the roof on the pergola and getting our pergola inspected by a qualified builder and signed off on OHS. Thank you, Professor Long. We would now like to introduce the McLeod College Band to perform another song featuring Madison, who helped organise the excursion to the Islamic Museum. Madison isn't performing yet, she'll be performing that later. 
Um, but now I'm going to sing Titanium by um, David Gwenner, as you all know. Um, sing along and enjoy. We would now like to invite Nan Capel, Deputy Chair of the East Ivanhoe and Heidelberg Community Bank Branches of Bendigo Bank, to represent the certificates of the next grant. I would now like to introduce representatives from Parkfield College to speak about their projects. Hi, uh, my name is Benji Gersh and I'm a teacher at Parkfield College and I just want to have a quick chat about some of the projects that we've been lucky enough to get funding for. Um, so first of all, it's probably worthwhile talking about the McLeod girls who funded Toys for Our Girls. So some of our students have kids of their own, and when they come to visit, um, 
the smiles on their faces when they're playing with the toys is just unbelievable. And when the kids leave with a beaming smile, having played with their mum or dad, actually, and played with toys instead of sat in chairs and looked each other across a table is a huge difference in what's going on at our school. Um, another project which uh, we're very proud of is that the girls in the Colour to Unit have been... Um, have designed and it will soon wear a school uniform to school instead of what's called section clothes. So instead of wearing a blank T-shirt and just blue pants, they're actually going to have some pride in their education, which is incredible. Um, one of the projects that I was lucky enough to work on, um, which I, I've seen the impact firsthand really, is with Katie's help. The first thing that I saw was one of my students who chest puffed out walking around the unit talking about how he secured funding for a magazine which is a very different conversation than the one we've been having before that. Um, and so from that process, we had our students writing articles about, um, about challenges and inspiration in their lives, putting it together in a magazine, which you can see here. And if you'd like to hear more about, come and speak to myself or Leah or Rachel after. But to today, when we've had this magazine out on our unit for, and around the precinct actually for a while, and one of the boys was released this morning and he was sitting in the office in casual clothes, ready to go and very nervous and his knee was shaking up and down. And I went up to him and he's already got a copy because he's actually published in this magazine. And I handed him another copy and he looked at me confused and said, what's this for? And I said, well, give a copy to your mum on the way out and she'd love to see it. And so he kind of sat there nervously, but big smiles. So I think we really need to thank the Youth Foundation for providing us with a lot of hope and some incredibly large smiles. So thank you very much. I would like to introduce Mahad, who will speak about the Somali soccer group. Hi all, I'm Mahad Atosh and I'm from Sarkov, which is the Somali Australia Council of Victoria. And me along with Katie met with, with, with a couple of the younger Somali boys and I asked them what would you like to, um, to do in order um, for a Youth Foundations grant. Um, two of them who are actually not present today, I'll be thanking on their behalf, which is Mohammed Hussein and Abu Bakr. And it was their idea, so it was their driving force. And um, they felt that during the summer holidays, when the soccer season was out, that um, a lot of the boys had nothing to do. So there was a lot of trespassing and loitering happening, which was, which was a bit annoying to the local community. And they felt that, you know, with these boys, the talent that they have, they could be doing something during that downtime too. So um, me and Katie spoke to them and we thought, what would you like to do? And they said they liked a futsal program, which was um, one night a week, every Friday nights. So they come in for two hours. And the program is run by the older boys. And every week they rotate which guy is facilitating. And the younger ones will have a role model to look up to, which is something that's not present in our community, especially amongst the males. So there's not much male role models. So um, the program's been going on for a while now, and they, they love it. And um, it's been a great success, and I'd like to thank um, Youth Foundations, Benue Health Centre, um, OLC, and um, Bendigo Bank. Thank you very much. I would now like to in introduce Kim Nichols from Bundura Secondary College to speak on behalf of our students. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my students are presently out today. They're doing a Cert 2 over in a warehouse in Kilsyth, sorting food for, um, to give to charities each Monday night. So I'm speaking on their behalf. At Bundura College, uh, Secondary College, about a couple of years ago, we started what's called the Parallel Program. The Parallel Program was introduced for students who are in mainstream and 
are finding it difficult to attend school for various reasons, it could be trauma related, things that are happening outside of school. Um, and I coordinate that program. And a lot of the students that have come into that program have always felt a little bit on the outer. So when Katie came over and offered um, for us to do something, the kids decided that they would like to have an excursion, which we all take for granted at schools that we're all going to get an excursion. But for many of these students who haven't attended school, they've missed out on all those sorts of things that, you know, from year seven upwards, they haven't been on an excursion. Um, so that the money that we were, we were granted, we were going to go to the snow, but because of, um, by the time you got all your paperwork in the department, the snow had melted. So we've decided that we are, we are going to go down to the beach for the day and the students are going to learn to boogie board, have a bit of surfing, a swim and have lunch and just spend the day together. I'd just like on behalf of Athena um, to read a letter to all of you. To the Bendigo Bank, this is her words, not mine. To the Bendigo Bank people and to Katie, I want to say a big thank you for giving us some money to go out together for the day. We are in the parallel program and we don't get to go out much and we haven't even been on an excursion. If we all go out together, we can make friends with each other and get to, each, get to know each other better. Thank you all very much from Athena. Thank you. I would like to invite to the stage the True Groups from Pavilion School to talk about their projects. Good morning all. My name is Maureen Muller and I'm one of the players in the Northside Bulls Pavilion team based at Pavilion School East Preston campus. So for those who don't know, the Pavilion is a school that offers a lifeline to young people who, for whatever reason, isn't given the chance to complete their schooling in a mainstream setting. The Pavilion enables us young people to dream again and to choose a future we want for ourselves. Having a basketball team in our school is a massive achievement. The team is the first ever sporting team within the school and it's, a way, it's way more than a group of youth putting a ball through a ring. The Northside Bulls is built on a foundation of mateship, determination and hard work. There are people within the team that have never been a part of a team before and most of us didn't know each other and our fitness levels, well that was an area that needed some attention to. Our school has classes at all different times and days and we live all over the place and all had our challenges to get to training. So to get everyone together each week and form a bond that enabled us to work together to achieve our goals was pretty special. It was pretty magical to see a bunch of kids that didn't know each other beforehand, encouraging and supporting each other both on and off the field. Our skill level amongst the team were all at different levels, but we all tried to better ourselves, whether it was in skill level, fitness or attitude towards the game. Each Wednesday, Kat and Andrew, our coaches, get us together and do an incredible job in training us for the game. They produce an inviting and encouraging training session. And although at times we get pretty tired, they push us to make our best in a fun way. One of my teammates said, it's helping me get self-esteem back and it's making me feel a part of something at the school. And another said, to be given the ability to play in my first ever basketball team allows us as students to extend our education to a new level not previously offered. We learn essential life skills such as teamwork, respect and discipline. It allows us to be proud of what we are doing and because some as aspects in our lives are hard to judge if we are moving forward, basketball gives us the opportunity to see progress and achievement in a new light as well as developing our physical health. For me, the proudest moment I've had within the team would have to be our first match. We honestly didn't know how we would perform as a team and the skill levels of our opponents. We had never done more than a training session and a muck up games before, but we all knew that we needed to work together and stay positive and that we were about to create pavilion history. So the game was very close and we ended up losing by a couple of points. But seriously, this was the proudest moment of my whole education. Although we lost, we knew that the score was irrelevant and that we were winners in each other's eyes. We definitely proved that strength doesn't come from what we can do. It comes from overcoming the things we once couldn't. 
So on behalf of all the team of the Northside Bulls, we would like to thank you guys for accepting our application for the grant and enabling us to get uniforms. Although they are still in the process of being created and sent to us, we all get can't wait to get our uniforms. Getting this uniform enables us to have a sense of unity and pride on a whole new level and physically demonstrate how proud we are, not only of ourselves, but our journey and being students within the school. You guys have definitely given us more than a grant. You've given us the ability to be proud of our achievements and to feel a sense of belonging and acceptance. And you were able to show us that we can achieve our goals and look the part whilst doing it. Thank you for the time and hope you have a wicked rest of the day. We worked together to create a design that we were all proud of and gave us a new level of satisfaction because we organised this start to finish. Thank you. Good morning everyone, I'm Alex and these are my fellow classmates that do a workplace traineeship with me at Big Seg, New Futures. I um, would like to say thank you and show our appreciation for the contribution made to our SAM project. The money that we've been so luckily given for our cause will make a massive difference in asylum seekers and refugees' lives by helping them enormously with their study and transport needs because everyone deserves a right to an education. As students at the Pavilion School, we understand what it's like to have struggles with trying to get an education and we are so proud of ourselves that we've been given the opportunity to help people and give them a chance like our school had done for us. We truly appreciate your support and you can check us out on Facebook to see updates. It's under the SAM project. Um, thank you to Bendigo Bank and your foundations for this opportunity again. I would now like to invite students from NMITV Cal to talk about their project. Good afternoon, members of the Banyol Council. I'm Tiana and this is Ari. Um, we're here today, and we're here today to share with you our personal development skills community project as funded by the 3081 program. During this semester, our VCAL intermediate class has been inspired by various movies, short films, and documentaries which feature youth homelessness. We have, also exposed, we have also been exposed to the harsh reality of poverty, sorry, of poverty and the mental illness and, the, and its association with homelessness, particularly in young people. After watching films such as The Choir of Hard Knocks, in the Oasis documentary, we have witnessed the ex excessive changes people can make throughout their lives, given, if given the right guidance, structure, and of course, something to strive for. However, the realization is that some people cannot find the comfort within our society and choose to remain homeless as a way to, of finding their own personal peace. Our teacher, Perina, has told us that Banyol Council was granting schools $1,000 to, to use towards the community project created to youth. We come up with the idea of creating comfort packs for the homeless, homeless in our community. We spoke with St Vinnie's and asked, and asked about some of the items some homeless people may need. They gave us the idea of placing scarves, beanies, socks and gloves in a comfort pack. We hope to provide personal packs consisting of these items to approximately 80 people over our community. We submitted our proposal and, w and were fortunate enough to be given the funds to make our idea a reality. In order to get a better understanding of youth homelessness, we had, to, we had the opportunity to participate in the Salvation Army Homeless Tour. It's, uh, it's an educational experience of youth homelessness. Our research found that Victoria does not have enough sufficient housing and emergency housing is very limited. 
Homeless people, particularly youth, are forced to sleep in some pretty rough alternatives such as streets, parks, cars, couches, or if, if they're lucky, a friend's house. Whatever the methods they choose, warmth and comfort is not always accessible. On any given night, there are more than 105,000 people who are homeless, enough to fill the MCG. Of these, 42% are under the age of 25, and almost half the homeless figure. Homeless is, homelessness is not a choice. Young people who become homeless often do so because they are living in damaging situations and are faced with physical, mental and emotional abuse. These are the main drivers of the youth homelessness and often lead to depression, poor nutrition and in most cases, substance abuse. While it is impossible to help every young homeless person, we hope that our PACs will go towards ensuring some comfort and provides the necessity, necessary items needed to go to young people experiencing homelessness right now. As students, we have the motivation to make this happen. Thank you. Thank you. We would now like to introduce Celeste, a participant from the Aboriginal Dead Ball that took place on the 6th of this month. Then we will watch a video of highlights of the night. Hello everybody, my name is Celeste <coughs> and I just would like to thank Nan and Katie for the money for the Aboriginal Deb 2014. Group of me and my friends come up with the idea and put into, we told Paula and she helped make it happen. Thank you Paula. Um, the night of the Deb was the best night of my life and I had so much fun with me and all my friends. We really enjoyed ourselves and um, it just gave me a chance to do something that I didn't really think I was going to do because I left school early and at this time of year all my friends are like doing their formal and stuff and um, yeah, I just felt like I was missing out, but when me and my friends come up with that idea, we was like, how are we gonna make this happen? And, but like, thanks to the Youth Foundation, like, they made it happen and yeah, and I hope you enjoy the film. And I did not know that I was getting filmed, so if you see me jumping around crazy, <laughs> I did not know the camera was on me. <laughs> All right, thank you. Shows them, you know, 
to be strong, and it helps them, particularly the, uh, the men that partner them, that they have a journey to go through life. And they start off going through this journey here. It gives them permission to continue, and it helps them become you know, very confident and helps them to become leaders, and that's what we need, leaders for the future. So may bundle my creator surround you all and keep you safe all country. And on behalf of my elders, I send them to Jika, or in Jerry Valley, which means welcome to the high of Wiradjuri country. I wish to welcome you from the tops of the trees to the roots of the ground. Because as we know, we look after country, country will look after us. So thank you. Thank you for celebrating our projects with us. I speak on behalf of all the young people represented today when I say thank you to Youth Foundation 3081 for the opportunity to fund our community projects. We also acknowledge that Youth Foundation would not be possible without the supporting partners, naming, namely the Heidelberg and East Ivanhoe Community Bank branches of the Bendigo Bank, La Trobe University, Banyul Community Health and Banyul Council. I would now like to invite Nan Kappel, Deputy Chair of the East Ivanhoe and Heidelberg Community Bank Branches, uh, the Bendigo Bank, to close today's celebration. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tiff, Stacey and Monique. There's lots of words to say in that. The great thing about Youth Foundation 3081 is that our young people have come up with their own ideas, their dreams and their goals, and through the Youth Foundation 3081 program, successfully applied for a grant. And then they've actioned these ideas, these goals and these dreams, and witnessed them come into life. And then they bear witness to the empowering experience and the many positive outcomes that come from realising these goals and dreams, far more than you would have imagined beforehand. On behalf of the partners of Youth Foundation 3081, East Ivanhoe Community, East Ivanhoe and Heidelberg Community Bank branches of Bendigo Bank, even I stumble on that, to La Trobe University, to Banyul Community Health Service and to Banyul City Council, well done and congratulations to all the grant recipients to the performances and the presentations today. It is obvious that you care, that you are concerned about issues in your community and your environment, and that you possess the skills and drive to action these. East Ivanhoe and Heidelberg Community Bank branches of Bendigo Bank have a lot of involvement in sharing the profits from our banking business back into the community. To date, over our short 15-year history, we have contributed more than $2.2 million back into the communities that surround us here. And by a mile, this grant, Youth Foundation 3081, is the one program we feel most proud about. Youth Foundation is now in its sixth year of operation, and over these years we've, missed, we've witnessed many wonderful outcomes from listening out for and hearing what the young people around us want to say and we're listening loud and clear. To our young people, the message is, keep dreaming of the ideas that will make your community a better place for you, for your family, and for your friends. Because Katie, our Youth Foundation 3081 facilitator, is ready to listen. And all the partners that I've mentioned are ready to add support when and where we're needed as well. To our guests today, young and old, thanks for sharing this special celebration. I encourage you to stay for morning tea and to share some of your 
thoughts and, and feelings about today's celebration. For those who wish to stay in touch, who we haven't got your email details with of all the, the actions of 3081 Youth Foundation, we'll be able to grab your details in the foyer. So don't miss out on finding out more stuff that's happening. There's lots that happens in between our celebration events, so it's certainly worth you keeping in touch. Thanks for your attendance. Thanks to La Trobe Uni for this fabulous venue. For Katie, Kate and Fiona for all your organising. And I think as we head out for morning tea, we're actually going to hear again from these incredibly talented musicians here from McLeod College. So in closing, I'll look forward to seeing you all, plus bring a friend along to Youth Foundation's 3081 2015 celebration. Thank you very much. <laughs>